Hi. So, in previous session, we have uh, studied the classical alternative and lactin pathway. Uh, these these are very important complement pathway. Okay. Now, in this session, we I will take you uh, to the uh, regulation of complement because uh, you can see that this complement need to be tightly regulated and there are some diseases associated with uh, some complement okay so i will take you uh, to all these thing okay so let's begin with uh, regulation regulation of complement and as you have learned that uh, complement components are uh, capable of attacking host cell and uh, because they can undergo spontaneous uh, activation and inactivation. So, everything need to be uh, tightly regulated. If it will undergo spontaneous inactivation, then microbe cannot be, um, uh, microbe cannot be, uh, there will be a no formation of membrane attack complex and then there will be an increase in number of microbe and that result to the disease. Okay. If they are not stabilized uh, uh, with other component uh, which is highly labile, then that will be also a problem. Okay. So, if you see very carefully the, uh, the all three complement pathway, the C3 uh, convertase is a major amplification step. Uh, okay. And therefore, this needs to, uh, to tightly regulate it. Okay. If this C3 convertase is not tightly regulated or it, if there is a dysregulation that may result to the disease uh, or that may result to the um, uh, growth of a microbial infection. Okay. W whatever individual is infected, there will be an increase in number of those microbes. So, this uh, regulation we basically, uh, uh, we will uh, discuss in two major uh, uh, component. One is soluble factor which is uh, regulating this uh, complement. Here you can see there is a uh, C1 uh, inhibitor, okay, which is also denoted as a C1INH. Okay. And this uh, inhibitor is a uh, Basically, uh, here you can see it is interacting with uh, C1R, C1S of classical pathway, if you remember, uh, uh, which is a subunit of uh, C1, okay, and C1Q, um, okay, and it is also interacting with uh, MASP2 of, uh, uh, of lactin pathway, okay. So, how this uh, works, so basically it displaces uh, the C1R or S and uh, in uh, which is in case of classical pathway and in case of lactin pathway MSP, MASP2 basically inhibiting this uh, activation of uh, MBL. Okay. So, this, this is a very important uh, uh, factor which can regulate uh, the initiation of uh, classical and lactin pathway. And if there is a some uh, uh, defect in this uh, C1 INH or C1 inhibitor, then that will result to a very complicated and very rare uh, heredity disease. And this disease is known as heredity angioedema. Okay. So, this, this disease is basically characterized by um, the individual basically uh, frequently they develop a uh, swelling in any part of their body okay and this swelling can be uh, extremely fatal if uh, if it is if this swelling is taking place in 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 uh, uh, inappropriate uh, or uh, in in some vital uh, vital places for example if this swelling will take place in respiratory tract then that will result to the choking of uh, uh, respiratory tract and then the individual cannot uh, uh, breathe. Okay? And if it is taking place in the gut, then that will be also a uh, very complicated situation. Although this swelling, there is an episode of swelling and this episode of swelling is uh, resolving by, it, by its own, but 
if this swelling is taking place in for example respiratory tract or gut then that may create a complication okay and it could be a extremely fatal okay so another uh, uh, molecule is c4 binding protein which is also denoted as a c4bp and this c4 binding protein is uh, interacting with c4b and basically it displaces c2a uh, uh, cofactor uh, for c4b cleavage by factor i so factor i is a uh, basically a serine protease which cleaves uh, uh, the protein okay another is cpn1 which is a carboxy uh, peptidase n this is a simple a carboxy peptidase n and this uh, carboxy peptidase n uh, the name is very clearly suggesting that uh, they basically cleave the uh, c3 a and c5 a and it basically make it inactivated okay another is factor h which is binding with uh, c3 b and basically it displaces a uh, capital b small b capital b small b is a larger fragment of factor b okay and it is also cofactor for factor i and its deficiency the factor h deficiency can result to the age related macular degeneration so what is age related macular degeneration so in in vision there will be a, uh, the straight vision the the central part will be the uh, blurred or uh, it will be not visible so that is known as a macular or macular related disease and if there will be a degeneration of a macular in which is present on retina then that will result to the age related macular degeneration another could be the atypical hemolytic uh, uremic syndrome so this is also very rare disease so this in this disease there will be a formation of a small clots okay and this uh, this uh, this uh, this clot can uh, can go in 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 any places particularly in the kidneys and then that will cause the uh, variety of problem okay there is a factor i which is uh, basically factor i is interacting with uh, c3 b and c4 b okay this is basically a uh, serine protease and you can understand that c3 b which is a important constituent of c3 convertase okay and uh, c4 b also so this this uh, factor i basically cleaves these uh, these uh, c3 b and c4 b and uh, if there will be a, a, a deficiency of factor i then there will be a low level of uh, uh, c3 and that will also cause the hemolytic uh, uremic syndrome there is another molecule which we call it as a protein s this protein s is basically interacting with uh, c5 b 6 7 complex and basically it is involved in inhibition of uh, mac formation okay so these are all the uh, soluble factor which is regulating the complement another is uh, the membrane bound factor which is regulating complement the first is crig okay and this is basically binding with uh, c3b and ic3b this is inhibitory c3b and c3c okay and basically this uh, uh, their action is that uh, inhibit the activation of uh, alternative pathway so crig is playing very important role in in alternative pathway okay so if there is a, some problem in crig then it will increase the susceptibility to the blood bond infection another is uh, uh, th these are the receptor these are the complement receptor 1 which is also known as a CD35, which is a receptor for C3B and C4B. Okay, so basically this uh, uh, this is a cofactor for I these molecules, and uh, it displaces the uh, capital B small B that is factor B larger fragment from C3B. Okay, so this makes a C3 convertase if you remember, and 
C four A and from C uh, C two A from C four B. Okay. Another is a decay accelerating uh, factor or DEF or CD. It is also known as CD fifty five. It is the ligand will be C three converters. Okay. It basically displaces the uh, factor B larger fragment from C three converters. And C two A from C three B and C four B, okay, respect. Uh, so, and if there is a deficiency in this uh, uh, DAF D A F or C D fifty five, that will result to the proximal nocturnal hemoglobin urea. Okay, so what is the meaning of uh, this uh, this uh, this term? Proximal means uh, sudden. nocturnal means night and hemoglobin urea means there will be a, a blood in the urine okay so so in these individual this is again a rare uh, rare disease but in these individual what is happening when they wake up in morning then they and uh, their urine will be uh, having a blood a it will be a dark red color it could be a brown okay so they will they will uh, produce lot of uh, um, blood in the in the urine okay or dead blood uh, which will turn to the brown in color okay so this is also very uh, complicated and rare disease and uh, uh, this can uh, there is a some some drug which i will uh, discuss in subsequent slide which uh, which which can be used for this uh, p uh, proximal nocturnal Hemoglobin urea. Okay, so uh, there is a uh, another uh, membrane-bound factor that is membrane cofactor protein that is MCP or CD46, which is interacting with C3B and uh, C4B. Okay, and action uh, will be cofactor for uh, factor I. And if there is a deficiency of these factor, then that will result to the atypical. hemolytic anemia okay the another molecule is protectin which is also known as cd59 it is interacting with uh, uh, c8 and basically it inhibits the mac formation and that causes the proximal nocturnal hemoglobin urea uh, okay so these are these are the regulatory factor and you can understand if there is a some problem in this factor that result to the development of disease now i will talk about uh, there is a some uh, microbial pathogen which evade this complement system here you can see that neisseria meningitis this can uh, uh, so basically this can uh, there there will be a some invasion molecule which is a factor h binding protein they make this factor h binding protein this these microbe and interact with factor h and inactivate the uh in inactivates uh, bound c3b another is bore uh, borilla uh, Bar burgodo ferry this 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 is a also pathogenic microbe and uh, they make a protein which we call it as a outer surface protein e okay this also interact with factor h and inactivate the uh, uh, bound c3b streptococcus pneumoniae this is also very pathogenic microbe and uh, they make a pneumococcal surface protein c and this is also interacting with factor h and uh, inactivates bound c3b so here you can see that the microbe also uh, have a some strategy to evade the complement system okay some of these microbes secrete some protein like neisseria meningitis uh, this uh, this makes a pro a which is binding which is like a c4 binding protein okay if you see if you remember the previous slide so they make the c4 binding protein and inactivate uh, bound c3b staphylococcus aureus they have a clumping factor a and this is basically binding with factor i and inactivate uh, bound c3b the streptococcus uh, st staphylococcus aureus also has a um, uh, another three proteins staphylococcus protein a uh, staphylo uh, staphylokinase 
uh, this uh, this also they make uh, this protein and complement inhibitor so basically all these uh, these uh, protein of staphylococcus uh, aureus can inactivate the bound form of c3b and bind to the fc region and interfere uh, with uh, c1 activation they can cleave the immunoglobulin they can inhibit the uh, convertase activity so in that way these these pathogen can evade the complement system and uh, establish the infection and cause uh, disease now i will talk about the uh, some complement deficiency although i have discussed in uh, previous uh, slides but uh, i will sum up uh, in separate uh, uh, session um, in, in this session uh, with these slides so there are some complement deficiency and that will be uh, result to the disease here you can see that the deficiency of uh, c1q c1r c1s c4 and c2 basically that results to the enhanced uh, uh, formation of immune complex and uh, this this enhanced immune complex in in the host result to the um, sle like symptom uh, glomerulonephritis vasculitis and individual will uh, have this uh, recurrent infection of uh, pyogenic uh, uh, bacteria okay pyogenic means pus forming bacteria deficiency of factor d and propradin show that uh, these individual will be more susceptible to the neisseria meningitis but uh, they are not susceptible to the another meningococcal bacteria deficiency of mbl which is mannose binding lactin a key component of lactin pathway show increase in respiratory tract infection okay deficiency of uh, uh, c3 show frequent uh, severe bacterial infection protectin which inhibits the c9 uh, okay and therefore it, in, it inhibits the mac form formation that is membrane attack complex so the deficiency of protectin will uh, result to the high risk of uh, thrombosis okay anti c5 is used uh, for the treatment of uh, i have told you proximal nocturnal uh, hemoglobin urea okay and uh, so this the, the, there is a uh, name of the drug is that uh, uh, aculizumab okay so most likely this is a monoclonal antibody okay this aculizumab is basically a monoclonal antibody against uh, anti uh, uh, against the uh, c5 okay and this is used for the treatment i have already discussed uh, this that there is a deficiency of c1 inhibitor and that caused the hereditary angioedema okay I, I i have explained you in more detail that these individual will develop a, a swelling in their body anywhere and this is a spontaneous and there is a uh, it's it's not known how how this uh, swelling is triggered and sometimes these swelling can result to fatality if it is taking place in vital places such as respiratory tract or in gut okay so with this i am uh, completing this uh, uh, complement and uh, now we will discuss uh, another topic in in subsequent session thank you